<laughs> Did I? Let me see. Hold on. I just realized I have a little video I can watch here. <laughs> well, that'll go well on the podcast. I want to see if it's useful. Um, okay, so there is. I did find an Instagram video of what is a potential ghost. I, I'm just gonna message this to you really quick if you want to want to look at it. You may. And I mean, it's hard. You know, it's hard to tell from an Instagram video if this is yeah, debunk, I found a debunkable. Few. But I've, it's you know, we'll watch it. I found a few school ghost videos that were interesting. Let me see. Um, oh, someone messaged me something. Yeah, weirdest damn thing. It took me a while to realize that year. Uh, Pop handle on your phone says "Go smudge yourself" smudge. and not and not go smurf yourself. Go smurf yourself. They work both work there. <laughs> Welcome. It's a, drink with, creep- it's a drink with this. We got a creepy cat here. And a dirt face with his dirt flaps. We're all talking like munchkins today. <laughs> it's Munchkin Monday. If you play this on the right day. I'm in a real awkward position right now. <laughs> okay. That's Katie McDonald in an awkward position right now. I'm we- Nick McDonald. Oh, we are we are recording. I was just being a smart ass to like focus us, but okay. No, I know, but it's... But, you know, it's, you know... Par for the course at this point. Only amateurs do two takes, so we're going to roll with it. Can you hear my foot squeaking on the desk? I a thousand percent did, and I am leaving it in the edit, yes. <laughs> trying to paint my goddamn toenails! What did you think of our clip show? I mean, I didn't make it quite all the way through, but... Um, yeah. Did you learn some things about yourself? Oh, that I ramble <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I want to say people are fucking garbage. <laughs> you can actually play a drinking game with that episode. You drink every time I say people are fucking garbage and derp, you'll be blitzed. Blitzy blitz blitz. You will drink yourself flowers. Johnny Bork Bork. That's my name, too. Hey, Johnny Bork Bork. You can lay under the desk. There's room. There's, there's, there's lots of room down there for derp derp. I don't know where my feet will go. Probably on you, but you can fit. That's good, because, you know, freshly painted nails look good with dog hair stuck to them. I didn't make it very far. <laughs> My feet were too squeaky. <laughs> I'll deal with it later. Do it now. Who cares? Fuck it. No one's listening. Fuck it! Oh, sorry, I scared you dirt. I mean, you're fine. You can lay down there. What do you think of you? You're a good boy. So, we did have a break. A long break. When you only do an episode every two weeks, and then you take one of those episodes off, it's goddamn forever before you come back. We talk in the microphone, right? That's the... We talk and talk and talk. Talk and talk and talk about nonsense. I still have the throat lump, but I have a voice now, so... That's an improvement. I managed to have a couple different throat illnesses in the time between the last episode and this one, well, but I'm over them are, now. Some of us are overachievers, all right? <laughs> some of us are chronically ill, and some of us are overachievers. Some of us like to see how far we can fit our mouth over the uh, pylon at the uh, bank where they have the lineup. I was just thinking the water. Like the, the bubbler drinking fountain. They don't have any drinking fountains open. That would be silly. That's because people like you put your mouth over them. <laughs> well, the water doesn't come out fast enough. You got to get a good seal on it and suck to really pull the water out of it. <laughs> and if you flick the hole with your tongue, it gets excited and goes even faster. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> be careful. We'll start calling you a lot. <laughs> Texting you in the middle of the night. What you doing? <laughs> Your wife's trying to figure out what's going on. You're like, you just got a you up text from a bubbler. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Gambled all and lost. So before we took the break, we decided what we were going to do. Schools? Is that what we... Haunted schools. Haunted schools. But I got vetoed from doing the one I worked at for six years, so... <sighs> yeah, well, we've covered that one in this show. A couple times, I think. I don't know. I know that one really well. Welcome to episode 83 of Katie Talks About the Haunted Place She Worked <laughs> I can talk about the haunted place I lived, too, or the haunted places I lived, or the demon stalking me. It's I got I got things. I got things we talk about. Why my house is full of wards, because someday I assume someone Sean Kilden Moore is going to show up looking for us. It's fine. It's just where we're at. Just where we're at with 2021. Did spirit travel that far? Or? I mean, I, I feel like it's plausible. All right. Strange things are happening in here right now. 
It's not. It's not a strange, demon. strange, hairy things. It's Priscilla the creep. <laughs> Priscilla the creep. Priscilla the creep. All right, haunted schools. Haunted school. Derplapped. Priscilla the creep. Well, where should we start? Do you I mean, start? there's a lot of haunted schools. There are a lot of haunted schools. Are there a lot of haunted? I found a lot of, like, haunted abandoned schools, not, like, a lot of haunted ones that were still in operation. I mean, like, there's even one in Eugene that's haunted. Is it still running, or is it abandoned? Maybe it's still running. It was still running when we were in high school. The one where the guy fell off. That the... was that was two decades ago. <laughs> I don't know. They tore down our high school, finished tearing down our high school last week, by the way. Did they? I didn't know they were tearing it down. They're building a new one. Which is great for them, but it still hurt my nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to win the lottery so that I could build them a new school and then have the old one and use it as a place to shoot. Like, that was my goal. Like, I could use it as a as a kind of studio. But I guess that's not going to work out, huh? guess I have to go with my backup plan, which is buying the Brockway store and turning into a theater. The apartment above it was for rent not too long ago. Yeah. Glad and if I... any if anyone has seen Fire in the Sky, yes, that is the Brockway store we are talking about, because that's in our hometown. Do you think anyone that has seen Fire in the Sky knows that that's called the Brockway store? They call it the Brockway store in the movie, oh, oh. because it says Brockway on, along the front of it. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know what it was in the script, but in the, in the movie, they call it the Brockway store, or, or he says, I'm in front of Brockway, or something like that, and then it's you can see the sign in front of the building. Fair. Um... They were going to use Aubrey's house for the main house for that, but her parents weren't home, and her grandma said no. Grandma's no fun. You want to tell your story first? You want to tell my story first? Um. Well, normally I would have you go first, so it's you and then me, and then you do the drink, but you're eating, so I guess I'll go first. <laughs> to be fair, I'm usually eating while we're recording. Yeah, usually snacking. This, like, this is like a real meal. You know how long it's been since I've got to sit and eat a real meal? <laughs> so, my haunted school I picked was the University of Montevallo, which or Montevallo, I probably should figure out how to say that. I think it's Montevallo in Alabama. And the reason I picked this was because I don't know who in Pelham, Alabama really likes our show, but God bless you folks. They are responsible for over 20% of all of our listens. Pelham, Alabama is office there where they're monitoring us or i don't know i don't i couldn't find anything significant that stood out to me i couldn't i thought ooh, maybe there's like some dark haunting or something in in pelham that's you know trying to draw our attention there but i couldn't find anything in pelham as far as a haunting but i did find the university of montevallo which is well it's about 12 miles by road about five miles as the crow walks in uh as the crow walks as the crow walks fair enough Cats doing stunts. No, we're not. <laughs> I will put you in the baby jumper. Once in the baby jumper. The scary thing is that there's bullets really close to him. So you're gonna do set them off? Throw them at me. <laughs> <laughs> you get shot by the cat. Cat knocked a baby jumper off into a box of bullets. One went off. Shit happens. Pretty much. So the uh, University of Montevallo, according to Campus Consensus, which is an organization, I forgot to look up and see exactly who they are, but it's capitalized. It's not like just... They not just it. like uh, the consensus of the people at the yeah. university. Okay. Yeah, yeah. According to Campus Consensus, University of Montevallo is the eighth most haunted university in America. It has a 160-acre campus with 28 buildings that are listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. And it is Alabama's only public liberal arts college. Most of the ghostly activity is focused around King House. Now, Montevallo is in the geographic center of Alabama. And the geographic center of Montevallo campus is King House. So it's like this weird kind of super focused thing of the state right there. Now the cat has a knife. A knife and bullets and a baby jumper. Yeah. I gotta go. (laughs) <laughs> far, far away from here. Well, I was just thinking of uh, Undercover Blues, where he's fighting with a knife and a baby stroller. You know, I was saying I wanted to watch Undercover Blues the other day, and Sean just looked at me like I was flowers. Didn't think it was a real movie. <laughs> I tried to get Kel watched a couple times, but she fell asleep both times. And it's and not streaming anywhere right now that I could find, so I couldn't force it on him. People don't, they don't know. They don't know good stuff. They don't want good stuff, sons of bitches. They don't want undercover blues. They don't want surf ninjas. What do you people <laughs> want from me? Okay. 
story time. Okay. We're, we're focused. Yeah. Look at us go. So King House is the center of Montevallo Campus, which is the geographic center of Alabama. Uh, the house was built by a wealthy Virginian planter named Edmund King, and he moved to Montevallo in 1823. At the time when he moved in, his house was much adored for having glass pane windows, of all things. That's fancy as fuck. Yeah, that is. During the Civil War, the stories have it that Edmund buried a large sum of money in his orchard so that the Union soldiers couldn't get their hands on it. Were you just attacked by a wolf? <laughs> I could hear nonsense happening, and I couldn't pinpoint it. And then it attacked me. <laughs> what was it? I was reading my notes. I didn't see. I mean, I'm not even quite sure where it came from. But all that was was a bag full of tissue paper and an old lady cookie sewing tin that has nothing in it currently. So I start talking about some place close to Pelham and ghosts start throwing shit around your house. I mean, I assumed it was a cat, but I don't know where the cat is. Or why half of the bag is on the other side of the... Like, this was like six feet away from the rest of the bag. Ghost tossed it. Fuckers. Boy, we should have been recording the video so we could go back and review. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you could have seen anything. Mm. All right. Well, I will press on and see if we upset anything else. So Edmund buried a large sum of money in his orchard so that Union soldiers couldn't get their hands on it. It wasn't till 1865 that federal troops occupied Montevallo under the command of General James H. Wilson. By then, it was two years after King's death, so they couldn't have got the money out of him even if they wanted to. <laughs> General Wilson did end up taking King House up as his headquarters. So, Edmund King's ghost is often seen on the campus. It's often reported being seen upstairs in his house, counting his money, or sometimes wandering the campus with a lantern and a shovel trying to find his buried deposit. Students once reported an elderly, slightly see-through man giving them a good-natured wave from the second floor during broad daylight. Spirits in King House have also been heard moving around in empty rooms. They've been known to move furniture, curtains, and shine lights through the windows. During a wedding reception held in King House, a huge, white-robed phantom appeared under the dining room table and floated out a window in front of all of the guests. Did you say white rogue or white robe? White robed. Robed, okay. I heard a white rogue, and I was like, what is that? It's a uh, multi-class when you pair a white wizard and a rogue. You know, it's... Like a fifth level some... half-elf, got it. Yeah, exactly. You know, you just play split class. Okay. So the King Family Graveyard also sits on the campus. Uh, it sits behind what's known as Hill House. Various ghost hunters and paranormal investigators have reported seeing orbs of light outside of its walls. From there, we're going to move to a, another building. In 1851, they, two buildings were constructed in Montevallo to form the male academy and the female academy. Is that where you go to learn to be a male? It's uh, very well, progressive. I'm not exactly sure what their goal was. They were founded by two Presbyterian ministers with the financial support of the church and some of the local townspeople, but they were both closed in fairly short order due to a lack of funding. <laughs> so they had the money to build it, but not the money to keep it going. The female academy building served as a hospital during the Civil War. There is a tale that when the Union soldiers arrived in Montevallo, they went into the female academy and just slaughtered all the sick and wounded Confederate soldiers that were there in their beds. Oh, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, it is. Supposedly, the soldiers that were killed are also buried in the King Cemetery on campus. But by uh, 1896, the Female Academy and several other buildings nearby became part of the Alabama Girls Industrial School, which was called an educational experiment with the goal of teaching young women to become self-sufficient by preparing them for careers as teachers, bookkeepers, artists, musicians, dressmakers, telegraphers, and milliners. That's not what I pictured when they said industry, but okay. They're trying. They're trying to empower these women. I support it, them. It was it was very progressive for, you know, the late 19th century. It was very unique. In 1925, that building was renamed Reynolds Hall after the industrial school's first president, Henry Reynolds. Reynolds was not just in charge of the school, but he was also a Confederate officer who was known for carrying out clandestine missions behind the enemy lines. 
Reynolds was removed from the school leadership, though when it was discovered he was having the students send their tuition directly to him, and he used it for personal investments. I like his style. I like his style. Nah, nah, just send me the check. I'll take it. Make it out to cash, though. <laughs> yeah. So the apparently blue specter of Captain Reynolds has been seen and heard in the building, and his presence is often felt around it. Doors and windows will open and close on their own, and Reynolds has been known to follow students at night. <laughs> Maintenance workers in Reynolds Hall claimed that the portrait of Henry Reynolds repositions itself around the building without being touched. Like, there was one story that somebody had moved his portrait in, to a new location and hung a different one in its place, and when they returned the next morning, the new portrait was on the floor and Reynolds was back in place where it originally hung. Hmm, it's fair enough. So, the building known as Main Hall became a dormitorium. On February 4th, 1908, a student named Condi Cunningham and her roommate were making hot chocolate in their room. When the curfew signal sounded, Condi and her roommate began to clean up the mess. Is and the weird? I just picture that as, like, a really loud, like, air raid siren. Y you know, that's kind of what I picture, too. I have no idea what a curfew <laughs> signal is. <laughs> Everyone go to bed. <laughs> As they were cleaning up the container of alcohol they used for the flame spilled on Condi's nightgown, and she quickly went up in flames. She uh, died from the injuries two days later. It was just a year later that students began reporting Condi's ghost in the building. Many speak of seeing a woman covered in flames, or report hearing someone running down the halls or screaming in the bathrooms. And sometimes a disembodied voice screams out, Help me! Supposedly, an image of a woman's face surrounded by flames appeared on the door to Condi's fourth floor I'm room. I'm just going to say, if you're hearing a woman scream, help me, in a dormitory, <laughs> you should check. Yeah, well, I believe they okay. are. I don't think anyone's... <laughs> ah, that's just Condi. Yeah, <laughs> ignore it. It's fine. Um, an image of the woman's face surrounded by flames appeared on the door to Condi's room. The school replaced the door, but a new image appeared on the replacement door in each subsequent replacement. Mm. <laughs> Said that a young woman also committed suicide in Condi's room sometime later, and some people theorize that this is the woman that runs down the halls or appears on the door. Eventually, the school just sealed off that room with a locked metal door and removed the wooden one. But they do keep the wooden one in the university archives, and they put it on display in the library during October to get people in the Halloween spirit. I really like that. Yeah. It's fucked up. <laughs> well, I really like it. There's a lot of things about this school that I kind of like. Like, I kind of wish I knew something about it when I was looking at school. I might have considered this place. <laughs> In 1928, Palmer Hall was constructed, and it contains the 1200 Street Palmer Auditorium, with both the building and the auditorium being named for the industrial school's third president, Thomas Waverly Palmer. Under Palmer, the school flourished. In 1911, the school was upgraded to a technical institute. 1923, it was renamed Alabama College State College for Women. Alabama College State College. That's that's what it said. That's, I didn't... that's a fantastic name. <laughs> <laughs> it was 1923 Alabama, and they renamed it Alabama College State College for Women. And at that point, it became a degree-granting institution. Men weren't accepted until 1956, when it became named Alabama State College. And in 1969, it graduated up into University of Montevallo. Supposedly, Palmer Hall is haunted by the bitter ghost of Dr. William H. Trumbauer, who was an ardent theater supporter and one of the building's chief designers, but his name was left off of the building's His name is amazing. Stone. It should be on everything. <laughs> but they left it off the cornerstone when they built the building. So, he has a good right to be pissed. <laughs> Trumbauer's ghost, affectionately nicknamed Trummy. <laughs> I'm just, I've never had a reason to go to Alabama before, <laughs> yet here we are. Trummy is known to be quite whimsical and likes to visit backstage as performances are being prepared. He's known as a supporter of the arts and an ardent perfectionist, so gaining Trummy's approval for a performance is taken quite seriously. There are old mirrors from the dressing room that have been moved downstairs, and for a while that became the hot spot to see ghostly women dressed in long gowns getting ready for a show from long ago. That's fun. One student said they stayed alone to practice the organ, and when she stopped, a voice asked her to continue playing, despite no one else being around. 
the biggest thing Trummy is known for is in uh, association with College Night. So College Night's an annual tradition at Montevallo where two teams of competing students engage in athletic competitions, and it all wraps up with a series of musical theater productions which take place on the Palmer Auditorium stage. And it's a thing where they're doing athletic competitions, but like the points are highly weighted for sportsmanship. And the student body separates into purple and gold, because those are the two colors of the school. So there's a purple team and a gold team. Is it the musical theater kids doing the sports things? Because this 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 could get weird. And they encourage the non-theater kids to take part in the musical theater part so that everyone gets in on the whole shebang which is pretty cool as far as i'm concerned so during the final dress rehearsal rehussy rehussy during the final dress rehearsal trummy will swing the banner of the team whose performance he most enjoyed which is supposed to be a sign of a guaranteed win on college that's amazing isn't it isn't that the best best ghost story i've heard in a very long time (laughs) possibly ever so that's the university of montevallo i will be encouraging the kids to check that out when they're of college age i wouldn't tell them why (laughs) well i did my ghosty school schooly ghost spoony school school Scooby Doo in the Ghoul School. So you want my story? So I guess it's, See, yeah. So I guess it's on. I didn't even think. I said school, and that my brain separates schools and colleges. Mm. So, I like I said, I just I just happened to stumble upon this one was close to Pelham, so I decided to run to with roll that. with that. So, fine. I did look at some other schools before I got to that point, but I realized, oh well, this is exactly what I need to be doing. All right, all right, all right. So I'm going to talk about. Is this half a name, or is it just the El Paso High School? I think it's just El Paso High School. Let me consult the Oracle a little more thoroughly here. I did school! I did school bus! That'd be a lot more fun than the magic school bus. Can we talk about the fact that I just found a list of these are the 13 most haunted schools in El Paso? Most haunted! <laughs> Not here's 13 haunted schools! Here's the 13 most haunted schools in El Paso. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta look at this list. Isoleta is the name of the school. I assume. I assume you're looking at the one that I'm thinking of. Um, but apparently they've got 13 of them. So yeah, no, I think around. I'm talking about El Paso High School. And when um, we both talked about a haunted high school in El Paso, I thought we were talking about the same one. Hold on, I'm going to open up this list of 13 and we'll maybe we'll, we'll hop onto this after my story. So everyone that graduates from El Paso, regardless of the school, is fucked up is what I'm hearing right off the bat here. I think, I think that's so. So, I was going to talk about the ghosts of El Paso High School. So El Paso High School opened 1916. It's uh, nicknamed the Lady on the Hill because it's an imposing campus that sits on the hill overlooking the city. The Greco-Roman inspired architecture. I'm sure that makes it more haunted. I don't know. Marble (laughs) floors, hardwoods. It's got the Jones Stadium, which seats 12,000. And it's one of the first concrete stadiums in the United States. From 1922 to 1923, it was called the Sam Houston High School at the behest huh. of the local that, chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. There, uh, there might be something to that in the haunting. That lasted briefly. The city was very upset, like the residents. Yeah. The non-Klan members were, were not super <laughs> happy with that, so they changed its name. It became registered as a historic landmark in 1980, the National Historic Landmark. Beto O'Rourke went there, so that helped. Politician, okay. yeah. I know. It took me a while. Like I, said, I, I, I know. Like I knew. You're like I know. I, I know the name. name. I know the name. Who is okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, Academy Award winning actor F. Murray Abraham. I don't know who that is. Also went there. And it's the it's an old actor. He, He's like a like a more stern, mustachioed Walter Matthau. More stern than Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more serious. Maybe that's a better. <laughs> I mean, Walter Matthau is a little squishy. I think. Yeah. I feel like Tickle Monster would get him. You jump around <laughs> in a corner when he's grumpy and yell, Tickle Monster, he's going to crack a smile. <laughs> Never done that to grumpy people. Never. Not even once. <laughs> um, it is the oldest operating high school in El Paso, but we've got some dark stories here. Let's start with the fact that it used to hold a morgue. <laughs> they had a really good undertaking course there. But I'm bunch. Well, so the basement was used as an overflow morgue during the World Wars, both of them, and during the Spanish flu outbreak. 
Okay, Spanish flu makes sense, but how many dead people did they ship into El Paso <laughs> from Europe? I don't know. Europe it was a working Pacific. overflow morgue during the World Wars. That's all I can tell you. They don't give me details. Maybe there was just a lot of, like, dead people in town. <laughs> They didn't say specifically that they were World War victims or soldiers. That's just the time, one of the times it was used as a morgue. So what they could have said was, up till the 1940s. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but anyway, basement temporarily held bodies that were shipped to El Paso in the wakes of the Spanish flu outbreak. Oh, and combat deaths from World War II. So I don't know why they were sending them there. Does not make sense to me. Let's send them to one of the hottest places in the nation. Fine. Yeah. Well, also, I mean... To get to El Paso, you have to go into the Gulf of Mexico. There's That's not a convenient drop-off location from any of the fronts. But let's just talk about the government here. <laughs> but that's where we're at. So, basement was a morgue. That's fine. But there's also classrooms from the early 20th century in pristine condition that were hastily boarded up. No oh. one knows why. I mean, there's dust oh. and things. But no one, right. no one can figure out why these classrooms, and these classrooms do appear to be in the basement as well, but they just were like hastily blocked off and all of the stuff is still in them. Oh. Huh. So. I'm trying to figure out if that could be Spanish flu related or if it's just, this is where we keep the evil things. Do not open dead inside? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They found them because they were looking at a crumbling brick wall they found in a tunnel in the basement and realized okay. the brick wall was hiding this, the old classrooms. There's two of them down there. And still no one knows why. Hmm. So that happened not long after the high school opened, because this happened in the 1920s during a snowstorm when the entire staff and student faculty, like, everyone was locked in the building. So they just decided to explore. That's when they found the sealed off rooms. And they scooby-dooed their way into a fucking sealed off demon yep. room? <laughs> but, I mean, there are... Reports of actual hauntings activity happening. I mean, these are just weird things. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. That's no, not... I assume we're building yeah. up here. <laughs> so, there's also supernatural trails going on in El Paso High School. Over the years, people have reported slamming doors, the sounds of spectral pep rallies, which I think is interesting. Games <laughs> going on in the school gym when the like the building's completely empty. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about boo? Nick's making a new shirt. That might be it. So, you know, you hear games happening, pep rallies. This is a spirited bunch. But um bunch. School spirit. Yeah. There's a first account story from a teacher where he was going home after a late night of work, saw a girl in an old blue dress standing at the end of the hallway. Certainly was not supposed to, that she was not supposed to be there. He went down to tell her that she needed to leave the property. When she turned to face him, she looked at him sadly. And then the teacher could only realize that she was an intangible as a mist, and she faded away. Mm. Sightings of ghost girls is a common occurrence at the school, with at least one being tied to a girl who committed suicide by slitting her wrists and jumping to her death from a balcony within the school. <laughs> the hallways and stairwell leading to that balcony have been walled off, but they know why. Like, we know why that yeah. one's walled off. Yeah. There's been multiple reports of seeing a girl standing on that balcony and occasionally leaping from it. Capes. Those brave enough to have snuck into the blocked off hallway have reported strange slime drippings from the ceiling and a light mist that pours through at least once a day, only to quickly evaporate. Another one of the most famous El Paso high school ghost stories comes from a class picture taken in 1985 of the graduating class. Mixed in among a row of teachers is a faded young woman in a white dress. Only a few people in the picture seem to notice her, and upon questioning, nobody in the picture has any idea who she was. <laughs> so don't worry. We'll have this picture for social media, all that jazz. And I mean, yeah, it's a it's a creepy picture. People insist she wasn't in the original picture, so no one's quite sure who she is. Many people regard El Paso High School as the most haunted building in town, which apparently is saying something if there's 13 of the most haunted schools. <laughs> it is still an operating high school. It has regulations, so you can't just, like, pop in and ghost hunt. Oh, we're going to pop in, go unseal some rooms and start some end of the world stuff. I probably shouldn't drink mojitos before I go ghost hunting. It makes me reckless. So, that's my that was my haunted high school in El Paso. Well, it's uh, certainly more ominous than the school I had. But we can talk <laughs> about this list. Do it. This list comes from Kiss FM El Paso. Kiss FM, the rod. I can't decide if mojitos are a good thing for you or a bad thing for you. Bad. 
All right, so there's Cathedral High School. I don't know why I just said that so awkwardly. Cathedral. <laughs> Do I say the word camera? Weird. <laughs> Naturally. So the third floor of Cathedral High School seems to be the most haunted area. One student claimed that while at his locker, he looked up and saw the end of a hall, the locker was left open. As he started heading down the hall to close the locker, it slammed shut and a white figure ran in the opposite direction. Even though he gave chase, the apparition disappeared as it turned the corner. Another area said is to be haunted is a classroom on the third floor. Once you walk in the classroom, you can feel an eerie presence as if someone is watching you, but there's no one in sight. That, to me, just sounds like they need to work on their electrical system. But Clint High School, the old gym above the theater, is said to be haunted by a girl who was sexually assaulted and her body appears to be hanging. The band room, Yikes. where the instruments are stored, also appears to be haunted, as music can be heard some nights as if someone was there playing. Crockett Elementary said that on the second floor, a student once witnessed a man walking down the hall with bloody gauze on his head and an amputated arm. The child didn't know was that the school building dates back to the 1920s and purportedly served as a hospital to war veterans once upon a time. Del Valle High School, three band members were killed and according to witness accounts, you can sometimes hear screams late at night. Other paranormal accounts include books flying off the shelves in the library. Your voices is getting very Red Queen. You're all going to die I down here. <laughs> Desert View Middle School. Staff and faculty have reported strange noises, including the sound of someone punching the lockers with no one in sight. Another occurrence involved a lunch lady <laughs> claimed she's... Ghost Kyle. Drinking monster energy drinks and punching lockers. Ghost Kyle. <laughs> and then Nick wrote a cartoon. Um, another occurrence involved a lunch lady who claimed she saw a white figure run through the gym one early morning, even though the campus was closed to students. El Paso Community College. Students and faculty have reported feeling a presence in the photo lab, claiming that they felt someone touching their shoulders and breathing on the back of their necks. Did you say soda lab? Photo lab. Oh, photo lab. <laughs> I heard soda lab. <laughs> it's so spooky, the cleaning crew, crew refuses to clean the lab after dark. I just think that they might have, like, a creepy photography professor. <laughs> <laughs> it's disappointing when you graduate high school and find out you're, like, the only person on the yearbook staff who didn't have sex in the dark room. <laughs> I'm sorry. The dark room was off, like, was not used at all when, when I was on the <laughs> yearbook staff. We'd, we'd moved to digital, mostly. El Paso High School is the most haunted high school in, the, in America. Blah, 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 blah. We just talked about it. I don't need to reread that. Escondrias Elementary in Socorro, Texas, was apparently built on top of a cemetery, and locals say that the ghost of a girl in bloody pan prints have been spotted. What, did she just run by? What are you looking for? There's a cat doing something back there. Oh. I don't trust him. <laughs> Henderson Middle School offers reports of creepy footsteps following students and screams down dark halls that have been heard. Carol T. Welch School. A little girl is said to haunt the school in Horizon. Locals claim hearing noises and seeing the ghost of a little girl that is said to have been killed during the construction of the school. Loretto Academy. She should have been wearing a hard hat. I don't know. <laughs> Loretto Academy is said to be haunted by a nun who taught for many years and later died of illness. Her existence is well documented by the Concordia Cemetery Association. Weren't you just over there making a noise? I don't know. No, she was not. It was the angry ghost. Well, the cat just walked into the room, so possibly. Or Theo <laughs> somehow on the bed. feel like <laughs> I would have noticed that. Loretto Academy is said to be haunted by a nun. Her existence is well documented by the Concordia Cemetery Association. And it's said that sometimes the bell tower is illuminated even though it's no longer in operation. Movement in the bell tower of a shadow figure wearing the same habit as the rest of the nuns has been spotted too. UTEP. Students and faculty reported strange noises, footsteps, and screaming heard late at night along with ghostly apparitions at both Cotton Memorial and Seaman Hall building. <laughs> <laughs> which date back to the late 1920s. The Fox Fine Art Building and Recital Hall is also said to be haunted by a figure that hangs out in the top balcony. How do we decide we say this? Yeselta? Yeselta. 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 Or Yzaleta. Yzaleta High School. I was like, those, those letters are not in that order. Yzaleta High School. I wasn't looking at the word. You were. I know. Words are hard. I grew up in the Southern Oregon impoverished school districts. Like, <laughs> Y'all should be happy I can read at this point. 
The West Coast Hillbilly Triangle. High school has many ghost stories, including the apparition of a cheerleader who took her life in the girls' bathroom, a boy who haunts the auditorium, and a janitor lingers in the hallways. They want you... No, ignore that part. That's a... (laughs) Email me if you've got another story. So, apparently, El Paso is, um is the shit you know grampy grew up in el paso so maybe he went to one of these high schools yeah well he was born in oklahoma and then when his mom died his dad shipped him off to live with an aunt and uncle in el paso oh see i didn't know that part Uh, and then he migrated to oregon so what your ghost business in the background is is grandpa telling you don't mess with that stuff no okay i know when it's him that wasn't him okay fair enough Bum, oh, bum, yeah. Bum. We should talk about drinks. Bum, huh? bum. I was going to say, yeah. It's oh, still yeah. on you, dude. Uh, my turn still. Whoa, what was that noise? Me going. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Or me going. It's, I don't know. I heard a dude's voice go, yeah. Like, really loud. <laughs> Great. I love being humble when the shit happens. <laughs> Hey, this is Editing Nick chiming in here, as opposed to Recording Nick, and I just wanted to jump in and describe what the noise was that uh, freaked me out, since it doesn't appear on the audio recording. What had happened was there was a rather deep male voice that said, yeah, in my ear that came through my headphones. It sounded like it only came through the left side. It didn't come through a physical form. It was definitely electronic, but it did not show up on either Katie's recording or my recording. We both record our own audio. Interestingly, I was able to get a little bit of the tone in uh, my recording because my microphone picked up some of the noise over my, my headphones from a little noise spillage, but it was such a low background noise that I really didn't feel it was relevant to include it here because it'd be really hard to hear if you didn't know exactly what you're listening for. If anybody really, really, really wants to hear it, let me know and I'll get that to you. But in the meantime, just know that that's what happened and it kind of set me on my heels there for a second. All right, back to the schedule show. Like, I don't know if it, I don't know if it'll show up on your recording or my recording, but I trumpeted and bumped some papers. No, it was like, it was like a guy's voice. Like, I mean, it could have been your trumpeting if it was really low, but... Where's my derp? Derp! <laughs> Maybe that's why Theo's acting up. There's something hanging out in the house. It's good that we're not doing two of these today, because... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently we're in trouble. Round it. All right. Drink. Drink! I need a shot now. All right. We're in schools. So, I'm obviously going to make... Alcoholic root beer. Cock, well... Purple Flaming Jesus. I'm just naming things I drink in school. <laughs> Magic Purple Punch. Scotch. Magic Purple Punch. Flaming Purple Jesus is what we had. Wasn't Magic Purple Punch Kool-Aid and Everclear? I mean, Magic Punch was Kool-Aid and Everclear. Yeah. I, you can make it purple depending on what Kool-Aid you put yeah, in. Yeah, you don't have my, sugar is the important my, part. You just take no. the Kool-Aid packet and pour it into the bottle of Everclear. And that is your Yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know, you can pour it into a two liter and mix them up that way. This is why we're all alcoholics now. That might have to end up on a uh, bad decision club. Um, okay, so still working out the kinks of this recipe, as always. Yeah. So I was like, cool, it needs to be milk. Well, it needs to look like milk. <laughs> so we're going to do we're gonna do chocolate milk, chocolatey chocolate milk. Yeah. But my story took place in El Paso, so I think I'm going to do like a Mexican chocolate. Okay. So my plan currently I approve. is it's going to be kind of a similar makeup to a white Russian. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to have some vodka, some cream, some Kahlua. Then we're going to do some chocolate sauce. And I think if we shake that with just a touch of pepper vodka and a sprinkle of cinnamon, it's going to work out. All right. We'll see. It might, you know, curdle and not be good. And then we'll be back yeah, to the drawing board. Yeah, let's, let's not do that. Mmm, curdled milk. <laughs> My fave. I figure like mom used to make. worst case scenario I can use, like, coconut or almond milk. Yeah. That won't curdle the same way. But I don't think it will curdle as long as you drink it, you know, before it gets hot. It should be fine. Uh, I don't know. High enough alcohol content can curdle milk without the heat. Yes, but this is, you know, a drink I've made. Before, just with slightly okay. slightly different elements. Same amount of yeah. alcohol. 
I think we'll be okay. okay. We won't use Everclear. F- How about that? Yeah, there you go. You figure it out so we don't make people. I would prefer that none of our recipes make people sick. <laughs> what if it's they're just sick because they drink too many? Get a hangover. That's that's on them. That's not on me. I'm saying let's not have any cottage cheese floats or anything like that. I don't have a name for this though. Well, an El Paso sundown. No, because it's got to be the middle of the day if it's the school milk. School milk. We'll just call it school milk. Muscle milk. I'm happy with school milk. Wait, is muscle milk the real drink or the one from- Yeah, that's the real one. You're thinking of crow milk or something like that. No, fight milk. Fight milk. <laughs> Made with protein. Protein. Made by bodyguards for bodyguards. A resort for bodyguards. I think I might like make a grilled cheese sandwich or something to adorn this drink. Just, you know. Yeah. Then I have a grilled cheese sandwich I can eat. Just call it a school lunch. Happy slices. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly time. Peanut butter and jelly time. Chocolate milk cocktail and a grilled cheese and sandwich. We call it the lactose buster. <laughs> I feel like we should call it the nerd buster. The nerd buster. Awful waffle. Awful waffle. There is no syrup involved in this. We can't call it an awful waffle. <laughs> All right, that's we can call your mojito an awful waffle if you add some syrup to it. but I'm not adding syrup to it. Not maple syrup. We could make a Canadian mojito. Maple syrup, muddled bacon, and some pot leaves. Probably a market for that. Maybe we'll really use some uh, recipe for that. Yeah, if you come with a recipe for that, we'll definitely publish that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I can muddle some bacon and some whiskey and some pot leaves. Well, I know you can, but can we do it that it tastes good? I mean, I don't think we should muddle the bacon if we want it to taste good. But I feel like maple syrup and pot leaves are good. Can't think of a more Canadian herb, but that's also very like West Coast herb, so. We're working on the wrong drink here. <laughs> I gave you the other drink. I know, but we didn't name it. Oh, no. That's a real dumb name. Reduced lunch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, is that it? <laughs> El Paso Reduced Lunch Program. <laughs> well, I guess if we got to move on to the end of the show and discuss what we're going to do next time. I know you had a specific story you wanted to do, so I was tracking down something to go with it. So I think that, that means the theme is going to be pirates. Arg. 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 Ahoy. I want to sing and dance. I want to sing and dance. I want to be a pirate in the pirate on pencils with my tight shiny buckle and my tight shiny pants. I want to sing and dance. That bright, shiny buckle and tight Yeah, shiny. I know. I always screw it up. Fine. So, so we do pirates. I assume you can come up with a piratey drink, like rum I'm and hot wings or something. With some doubloons in it. Yeah. Doubloons! Chocolate doubloons. Um, yeah, it might not be a pirate drink, but it's fine. It's happening. <laughs> There's a drink okay. happening. There's a drink happening. There's a drink happening. I already, I already have a drink. All right. I haven't figured out all of the specifics of it yet, but we've got a we've got a base idea. Well, if it matches your story, then it's good enough, right? I mean, we can have a pirate drink, which would be rum. Good enough for the girls I go with. A jug of rum. I have I have a jug and of a, rum and a dead man's chest. I have a jug of rum and a dead man's chest. I have a skeleton on my front porch year round. <laughs> yeah. The last time I door dashed anything though, like this guy was the best door dasher I've ever had because it's just like, you know, I select the just leave a door. They text you when it's here. I went out there, looked down, and I couldn't find it because the skeleton was holding it. That's pretty great. Uh, so we will end this episode then. We encourage you to check out our show notes. Uh, sounds like we'll have some multimedia stuff to add to this one. I have like, some stuff. I got some shit. I got some shit I'll send you. Like, we're putting shit together. Like, we're coming back better, stronger, faster, farther. And I have a puffy face from taking prednisone. Higher Fort Worth Winston. Virtual. Grapple. Hook. <laughs> the third. <laughs> Winston Churchill Grapple Hook the third. <laughs> oh, boy. I took check, a... Check, 
Uh, no, say it. Ramble. Oh, I took it to go order yesterday, and I asked the guy his name. Let me start with your name. He said it's Bob, and I said, "All right, Bob." And he's like, "Never mind. I'm going to be Chance Danger today." And I said, "All right, Chance Danger." That's awesome. And then Good he came him. in, and I'd already typed in Bob, so I just rolled with it. I knew he was Chance Danger, and he came in and told one of the other girls he was picking up an order for Chance Danger, and that caused mayhem. But <laughs> fine, we figured it out. I got him his food. Good for him. So. Like I said, check out our show notes. We have links to the website. Uh, we have links to finding the show on Apple, Google, Spotify. Somebody like found our podcast on Spotify and then like did like a deep dive on our website, like they're investigating us for the feds or something. Probably for the Fed. We also have links to how you can support the show if you enjoy it and want to encourage us, because you know. We got a lot of quid in us, so you guys got to keep encouraging us. So, uh, you can you can support the show through Patreon. You can support the show through Anchor. You can support the show through our merch store on T Public. Is that the right one? I always say the wrong one. I Next, think it's T Public. I think it's T Public. That's there's, not right. There's T Spring and T Public, and I think we're yeah. T Public. We're T Public. Yeah. Always, yeah. 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 And shit. Um, Nick's gonna make a new shirt. Sounds like I might have to make a couple, yeah. And um, I've got Theo feet pics available. I got a, I got a cat. That's, I'm, the cat's about to lose his balls if anyone wants to buy those. Ghost Kyle will be on projection in Netflix for fall next year. I feel like that's more of a Hulu show. Possibly. A one-season Hulu show. Axe Cop! As long as I get Dan Harmon and, or uh, Justin Roiland involved, then they'll let me do whatever the fuck I want on Hulu. Well, start our letter writing campaign now. <laughs> will be a drink drinky drink drink it drink it drink spirited school drink that's right we will have a recipe for uh the reduced lunch maybe uh, maybe a canadian mojito maybe that might end if, if it's done in time we'll put in the show notes if we get it done at all it'll end up on the website that's where those things tend to fall those things those things which thing that thing that thing that thing uh, drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Did we say that? We have not, but you just did. Don't end up our next ghost. And we will catch you in the next episode. Catch you on the flip side. In the next episode. Nick and I are going on vacation soon. Maybe we will do family ghost explorations. Maybe. What I really want to do is I really want to... Well, I want to do a couple episodes. I would like to do one like... I'd like to do one with Mel around because I feel like Mel would be a good addition to the podcast. Because she encourages our nonsense? She does encourage. She encourages us like no one does. And also, I think it'll be fun if, you know, while we're at Yosemite or shortly before we go to Yosemite, we just talk about some missing 411 shit shit for Yosemite just to psych ourselves out. So I literally tape my child to my body the whole trip. That's precisely. I mean, he'll probably be in a backpack. Or have his <laughs> leash. So there's that. <laughs> Should I get him a sportier leash for this trip? Because it's Yosemite. How, how sporty does a leash get? His leash right now is a penguin backpack. And that's adorable. But I just don't know that it's a Yosemite appropriate leash. No. May, and I, he might need a longer one. Since, you know, we'll be out in the wilderness. Gotcha. The running lead. Can we just dress him up like Yosemite Sam? <laughs> <laughs> So that's a yes. It's happening. <laughs> He's going to get dressed like a minion one day just because of how he flips banana. Banana. No, he drops his voice down and goes, ba ba ba. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's pretty cute. Yeah. The fucking cutest. Ba ba ba. <laughs> All right. I guess we should say goodbye so that people can be left alone from our rants. So people can find their peace. Find your peace. Either the kind you smoke or the inner. Piece of ass. All right. Ask for ask your cash. Nobody writes for free. Not fucking right. nobody. That's right. Goodbye. Bye. Think on that. Think on that. Life lessons. How do people still listen to us? Yeah. Yeah.